In this video, we're going to look at sketching cubic graphs. So a cubic graph is a graph that's in the format y equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Um, it may not have the bx squared bit or the cx or the d, but it always will have an ax cubed. So anything that has an ax cubed or an x cubed as the highest um, term, highest power term, then it's going to be a cubic graph. And to sketch a cubic graph, you're going to need to do a few things. One is to find out where the graph crosses the x-axis, so you let y equal 0. Find where the graph crosses the y-axis, so you let x equal 0. And then you need to figure out what the correct shape of the graph would be, and then you just sketch it. Okay, so here we've got y equals x cubed. Now, you should have seen this from GCSE, but let's just recap it. Um, to cube a number, remember you multiply by itself and by itself again. So over this side, a positive times a positive times a positive is a positive. And obviously the bigger the number, like for instance 10, 10 times 10 times 10 is a thousand, so it's going to get very large very quickly. Zero cubed, well zero times zero times zero is zero. And then as you cube negatives, a negative times a negative times a negative is a negative. And as you cube bigger negative numbers, so like for instance minus 10, is then going to be minus a thousand, so it's going to get uh, very low very quickly. So it has this overall shape, and that's whenever it just has the x cubed part, okay, the x cubed term. Likewise, whenever it's minus x cubed, it's going to be the other way around, because you're going to cube the number and then make it negative. So you have a positive, a positive times a positive times a positive is a positive, but then we make it negative, so it's going to get very low very quickly. And a negative times a negative times a negative is a negative, but then we times it by minus 1, so it becomes positive, so we'll have this overall shape. However, whenever you've got all the terms, for instance, ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, we'll have this overall shape like this, okay? Um, again, as you cube positive numbers, they're going to be very large. As you cube negative numbers, they're going to get very low. And then you're going to have this sort of shape, okay? You see uh, later on whenever we sketch them that they will have that ship, okay? Sometimes they're crossing to, uh, three locations, sometimes it only cross once and so on. Okay. If there's a minus sign in front of the x cubed part, okay, so ignoring all the rest of it, if you just look at the x cubed part, if there's a negative sign in front of the x cubed part, then it will have this shape, okay? Because a positive times a positive times a positive is a positive, but this negative sign will make it negative. And obviously that's going to be the biggest term as you use larger numbers, so this is going to have the sort of the the biggest impact on the ship. So it'll go down very quickly. And negative times a negative times a negative is a, a negative, and then times it by this minus will make it a positive. So if it has an x an ax cubed, then it's going to have this ship. If it has a minus ax cubed, then it'll have this ship. Let's have a look at a question. So this question says sketch the graph y equals x minus one x minus 3 and x plus 2 and this is factorized for us so that's quite nice. So remember the first thing is to find where the graph crosses the x-axis so you let y equal 0. So let y equal 0 so we're going to say uh, to find where it crosses the x-axis you let y equal 0 so you're going to get 0 equals x minus 1 x minus 3 and x plus 2. Now obviously if uh, things turn times together to give you 0, um, one of them or all of them are going to be 0. So here one of the solutions will be x equals 1, this solution will be x equals 3, or this one x equals minus 2. So it's going to cross the x-axis at 1, it's going to cross at 1. It's going to cross at 3. And it's going to cross at minus 2. So that's 1, 3, and minus 2. So that's where it's going to cross the x-axis. Next, you want to find where it crosses the y-axis. So you let x equal 0. So if I go back to this and I find where it crosses the x-axis, y-axis, sorry, y-axis, y-axis, you're going to let x equal 0. So that would give you y equals 0 minus 1, 0 minus 3, and 0 plus 2. When you work those out, you're going to get uh, minus 1 times minus 3 times 2. Minus 1 times minus 3 is 3 times 2 is equal to 6. 
So it's going to cross the y-axis at 6. So overall, the graph, now also remember, let's just check the shape of it. We need to think of what the shape would be. Okay. Um, if you look at it, it's going to be, if you time, multiply out these brackets, you're going to have x times x times x. So that's going to give you x cubed. You don't need to worry about the rest of it. You just need to consider the x's. x times x times x would be x cubed. That's a positive x cubed. So we'll have that shape. Let's draw it. So it's going to come up. Then down, then up again. It's going to have that shape. Let's have a look at another question. So this time we've been asked to sketch um, y equals x bracket x minus 2 bracket x minus 5. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to want to find where it crosses the x axis. So you let y equal 0. So let y equals 0. So I'll give you 0 equals x bracket x minus 2 bracket x minus 5. So our solutions would be x equals 0, or x equals 2, or x equals 5. So that means it's going to cross the x-axis at 0, so it's going to be the origin, 2, and 5. Uh, next, we need to find where it's going to cross the y-axis. We can actually see it's going to be the origin already. Let's check it. So let x equals 0, that will give you y equals 0 times minus 2 times minus 5. That's going to be 0. So it crosses there. And then finally, we just need the shape. And let's just expand it. So just consider the x terms. x times x times x will be x cubed, positive x cubed. So it's going to have this shape again. It's going to come up. It's going to come down. And it's going to come up like so. Next, this time we've got y equals x plus 4, x minus 3, 1 minus x. So again, let's find what crosses the x-axis. So let y equal 0. So that's going to give you 0 equals x plus 4, x minus 3, and 1 minus x. So the solutions would be x equals minus 4, or x equals 3 or x equals, well, that's going to be 1, to make it 0. Okay, so we know it's going to cross the x-axis at minus 4, 1, and 3. Okay, next let's find where it crosses the y-axis. So to find where it crosses the y-axis, you're going to let x equal 0. So put an x equals 0 in here, you're going to get y equals 0 plus 4, 0 minus 3, and 1 minus 0. So that's going to give you 4 times minus 3 times 1. And times it goes together will give you minus 12. So that's going to mean that the graph is going to cross down here somewhere minus 12. Now lastly we need to find the shape of the graph. So that we're going to just consider the x term. So we've got x times x times minus x. So x times x times minus x, x times x times minus x will give you minus x cubed. So it's going to have this shape this time. So it's going to come um, down, up and down. Okay. So it's going to have that shape. Remember, if it's got a negative x cubed, it's going to come down. So because it's minus x cubed, you're going to come down this way. So the graph is going to come down. And up again, and then down again, like so. Okay, so it's going to have that type of shape. Okay, let's have a look at this one. So we have got y equals x minus 2 squared, x plus 3. So again, let's find where it crosses the x axis. So you're going to let, so we find where it crosses the x axis. You're going to find let y equals 0. So you're going to get 0 equals x minus 2 squared x plus 3. I'm actually just going to write this out again. So it's going to be equal to x minus 2, x minus 2. Remember, squared means multiplied by itself, x plus 3. That equals 0. So these are solutions will be, well, 0, or 2, 2 
and minus 3. So you've got x equals 2, x equals 2, and x equals minus 3. So we'll just plot those. So minus 3 and 2. Now uh, you'll notice we've got two solutions the same, a repeated solution. So whenever you're plotting a uh, cubic and you've got a, a repeated solution, it actually means that it touches at that point. So it doesn't actually go through the axis at that point, it touches at that point. So and let's just check the shape of the graph. You've got x squared times x. Well, x squared times x is x cubed, so it's a positive x cubed graph, so it's going to have the typical shape like that. But we know that it's got a touch here, okay, at 2, so at 2. And minus 3, it's going to touch it too. Okay, uh, you can just point out, uh, make sure you always label the coordinates. Okay, so here we had 0, here it was 2, here it was 5. Uh, the points were across the axis here, it was equal to minus 4, here it was equal to 1, here it was equal to 3, <clears throat> and that was equal to minus 12. So going back to this, uh, sorry, so we know that it's going to have this shape, we know it's going to have to touch it too. So it's going to come up. And it's going to come down, touch it to, and up again. Okay, and it has the, the positive x cubed shape. And you'll see it touches it too. So if you have a solution that is squared or repeated, like two two, it'll touch that point. Okay, so it won't actually go through. Okay, and a final example. This time it hasn't been factorized for, so we're going to have to factorize it first. So let's just factorize it. So. Um, well, actually, this last example, we should have actually found it across the y-axis as well. So that might have actually helped. So if we let x equal 0, x equals 0, you would have got y equals 0 minus 2 squared, 0 plus 3. Minus 2 squared is 4 times 3 is equal to 12. So across the, it crosses the y-axis of 12. So that actually might have helped us actually get the shape a bit better. Okay. And finally, this one. So this one needs to be factorized first of all. So you need you need to factorize it. You'll notice that x comes out as a common factor. Now in C1, you will find that it's easily factorized. So x comes out as a common factor. So x squared minus 2x minus 3. This can now be factorized. So you're going to get y equals x bracket 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 x x. And it's going to be minus 3 plus 1. Let's just check it. x squared plus x minus 3x would be minus 2x minus 3. Fantastic. So to find where it crosses the x-axis, you let y equal 0. So to find where it crosses the x-axis, let y equal 0. So that would give you 0 equals x, x minus 3, x plus 1. So our solutions would be x equals 0, x equals 3 or x equals minus 1. So plotting those would give you 0, minus 1, and 3. Let's find where it crosses the uh, y axis. So y axis, let x equals 0. So then that would give you, uh, let x equals 0, you're going to get y equals 0 cubed. Oh, so I was putting it back into the original. You could put it back into the original, or we could put it back into this one. Actually, let's put it back into the factorized one. Um, maybe the top one, because that would be actually correct. What if you made a mistake factorizing it? Um, but I'm actually just going to put it into the factorized one. <laughs> Move my mind up. So putting zero into uh, the factorized version, we give you zero times zero minus three. So it's going to be minus three. And zero plus one, which is times by one, that's then going to give you zero. Actually, you knew that. Uh, we should have known that because it went through the origin on the x-axis. Uh, zero on the x-axis. So let's just sketch it. And actually, just get a shape. Looking at the original, you can see it's just an x cubed, a positive x cubed. So it's going to have that type of shape. Okay. So it comes up, down, and up again. Okay. And let's just label the point. So it was um, minus 1, 0, and 3. So that's how you sketch a cubic graph. So remember, find where it crosses the x-axis, find where it crosses the y-axis, so let find where it crosses the x-axis by putting it equal to zero and uh, y equals zero and factorizing it and solving it. 
uh, find where crosses the y-axis, so let x equal zero, so substitute that in and find the value for y, and make sure you get the correct shape of the graph. And also, if you have any repeated roots or any repeated solutions, so x equals two, x equals two, uh, you're gonna find that it touches at that particular point.